going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode. We are your hosts. I'm Sean Calhoun, and this is my lovely wife. I'm Christina Calhoun. And <clears throat> today, we're going to be talking about the current problem. <laughs> One of many. But before we get into that, if you want to get in touch with us, you can go to our website, prettyhomeacademy.com. There, if you have further questions, you could schedule a one-on-one -on -one strategy call with us. And we also have other training videos there. You can also see us here on Facebook as well as YouTube at Pretty Home Realty. That's right. That's right. And if you want to send us a message, <clears throat> you know, you can find us as well. Like, like Christina said on Facebook, Sean Christina Calhoun. All right. So let's get into it. What's the problem, Sean? <clears throat> well, the problem is there's no inventory. Yeah. So that might be the current problem, or if you're watching this in the future, that may not be the problem at that at this time that you're watching it. But if it is a problem, these are some principles that that pretty much work. Period. So this is going to help you solve that problem. I mean, it's not. <clears throat> I mean, this is the answer that that's wearing some 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 overalls, right? And, and like like some farmer overalls and it's called hard work but and you can use these techniques if you have a buyer that needs a house in a specific area and there's no homes available it doesn't have to just be low inventory it's a way for you to really like tweak it for your circumstances that's right and if you stay to the end <clears throat> these five points that we're going to give you the we're going to give we're going to start with the toughest okay <laughs> we'll start with the toughest one and we're going to end with the easiest one. Okay. So, um, the way I like to do it is I'm going to give my kind of spiel on it. And then I want to hear Christine. I want to hear you. If you have something to add to it. All okay. right. Can you do that? Yeah. All right. So we're going to start with number five. The number five expires. Now you might say, Oh, I already know that. I know I can call an expired, but I, don't, I have a buyer. I don't want to call it expired listing. Well, if you if you do this, so there may be someone who expired maybe two years ago. The the price difference from two years ago to the the time to the current present time likely that the value has went up. You know, depending on when you're watching this. So if you call it expired listing, that could actually, their home could be worth a lot more. The price that they were trying to get that was unreasonable may not seem so unreasonable now. Plus, they already expressed the desire to sell at some point. So that is a really good, uh, that's, that's a really good place to go with uh, with your buyers, because especially if it's an expired, look for an older expired in that area that you're looking, or you can do a, a search for expired with the same criteria that your buyer is looking for. So if they're looking for a colonial 2,700 square foot to you know 3,200 square foot, Look them up under expire, unconditionally withdraw. Look them up like that and reach out to them. Now, you might be like, okay, or you might say, how do I reach out to them, right? That's the biggest hurdle to get over, okay? Well, you're going to use a expired letter, a expired letter, okay? Now, if you want an example of an expired letter, just send us the message. You can message us on Facebook um, or or wherever you're watching it. If you if you're watching it on YouTube, just write a comment and just send us the message, and we can give you some examples because we have them. This is something that we've done and we've gotten listings from it um, successfully. All right. Do you have anything to add, or you want to keep it moving? Um. Do? Also, phone calls are really good. There are some techniques. For a phone call, it's a little faster response. So those are good as well. That's true. As a matter of fact, I'm glad you said that. We have a, a method that we use that is you we sometimes use both. So if 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 it doesn't work with just the letter, 
then we we do both. Mm -hmm. We do a letter and then a call. So that's really kind of cool. And with the call, I, I I just can't leave this one. With the call, <laughs> it's not what you think. Okay, if you're calling, and, and if you guys want more training on this, let leave us a comment and let us know too. With the call, there's something really clever that you can do. You can't call as the bravado agent, right? Kind of call as the clueless, interested person in the house. Like, hey, um, you know, don't sound so scripted. Hey, um, is this, I hope I have the right number. Um, I was calling for so-and-so. Um, it looks like you, you were, your house was for sale at some point. Um, I don't know. Anyway, give, you know, if you can call me back, you know, just sound like that. Okay, don't sound like the big bad agent. Ah, you're so scary, right? That's a big key. That works. You will get calls back. All right, what's point number four? Okay, okay. Point number four, for sale by owners. For sale by owners. Now, again, when you hear this, it's like, well, I know this, but what the the, the what holds us back is... Like we need confidence. Like, what do we do? So first thing you need to know is there are two types of for sale by owners, okay? In general. Now, you got all bunch of micro other things, but in general, there are two types. There's the one for sale by owner that is going to sell it themselves, period. No matter what, I'm not paying any commissions, get out of my face, right? There's that guy. And that's the person that agents are all terrified of. Oh, I don't want the, the rejection from that, that for sale by owner. And then there's the second person. Now, the second person, they're selling it for sale by owner themselves. However, they're on a timer. They're on a timer. And they are subconsciously looking for an audition of an agent to sell their house. What do I mean? They're going to say to themselves, I'm going to give myself 30 days or I'm going to give myself 60 days, I'm going to try to sell this myself. And if I can't sell it myself in 60 days, then I'm going to get an agent to, to sell it for me. So if you get in touch with them and you just stay in touch with them, more than likely on the first time you, you talk to them or reach out to them, they're not going to, um, they're not going to just list their home with you or, or sell it, you know, even if you have someone for them. They might, but normally they don't on the first time. You have to get to know them, be a good friend, and, and put on those, 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 what's the outfit? The, the farmer outfit, the coveralls, right? Pull it up, snap it down. You got to work. You got to call them. You got to, you got to help them, provide some service, educate them, sound knowledgeable. And, uh, and if you have the buyer, a lot of times they'll pay a commission, you know? Or at least part of one. Yeah. And even some for sale by owners that are like, I'm selling myself, some of them will pay a commission. Some will. You know, it just, it just, you know, but you, normally you got to break down the barrier. They don't know you and they don't like you and they don't want you. That's fine. But you got to help your buyer. That's right. I'm really calling because I, you know, I really want to help my buyer. You know, they, they, they need a house and yours looks like it will work, you know, soften them up. All right. Number three. Number three. Ooh, now this is, we're getting into the sweet spots here. Off market properties. Now, when I say off market, you know, obviously expires and you know unconditionally withdrawn all of those are off market but what i'm talking about is off market this baby has not been listed in a while if ever off market it is not on zillow it's not on the mls right oh by the way just going back to for sale by owners if you want to find them just go on zillow tons of them tons of them just go on zillow all right so back to the off market now, where do you find them? In the MLS, public records. Go to the public records in the MLS, okay? So let's, let's break it down specific. I have a 
a, 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 a family that is looking for a ranch. They want to downsize. There's this uh, condominium community with all ranches and they want to be there, right? So you look in the public records, we can see how long people have been there, right? And so you have different people, you got lifers, right? They've been there for 20, 30 years. And, and then you have people that have been there for a shorter period of time. Now, the, the sweet spot is normally going to be, uh, you know, the the four to, to eight years within there. They're, they're, those ones will more tend to move. But the lifers, if they've been there for a long time, they might be looking to, to move. And I mean, I'm going to give you some real gold. You can look on True People Search. So that, you know, look in the public records, right? And get um, the addresses. You can go to True People Search. It'll tell you the age of the person and give you their phone number. Okay? Yeah. The age and the phone number. And it's free. And it's free. No membership, no nothing. Okay? We're going to show you how to make money. Look, if you want to make money, you got to roll with the winners. So, off market, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Has this ever worked for you? Oh man, yeah, absolutely. I had a guy call uh, on a on a property that it was already sold. Like we listed it and we sold it. They call. He's like, "Hey, I want to buy this land." I'm like, "Hey, dude, it's gone." Oh, he was so sad. I said, "Hey, there may be some others available. Are you?" If I find one, would you be interested? Absolutely. So I did exactly this. Christina knows. I sent letters out. And when you send letters out, you got to remember the letters probably aren't going to work on the first time. America opens their mail over the garbage can and the shredder, right? If it's important, it's getting shredded. If it's not, garbage, right? You know it's going to hit the garbage can. What you want to do is just call you before it hits the garbage can. No like trust. When they first get it, they don't know you, they don't like you, and they don't trust you. So you got to hit them with probably three letters before they call you. So just mentally be prepared. And when you, I mean, just do it. Like, just do it. You know, put it on your calendar and just do it, right? That's what I did. I sent out a letter, no response. Sent out the second letter, no response. Sent out the third letter and found them on Facebook. And I was ready to call him. I had his number. But he called me. Next day, he came in to the office. We filled out the listing paper. Next day, the buyer came in, bought it. Done. Both sides. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it works. Okay. That's just one example. But I want to let you know, like, this is what we do. It works. It's not because we're so special. These are skills we learn. You can do it too. All right. Point number two. Point number two. Make better offers. <laughs> Make better offers. This is easy. This is for the <laughs> homes that are actually on the market for sale right now. It's already out there. Christina, how can someone make a better offer? What's the first thing they need to find out? They need to contact the listing agent and see if there's anything specific that the seller is looking for. What do they want? Give them what they want. What's an example of what they might want? So everybody thinks, oh, if I make a really high offer, this is going to be the number one pick for the seller. But price is not always the most important thing. Sometimes they may want to stay for 30 days after closing because they're trying to buy another property. That might be really important to them. Or they may want to keep their appliances. So if you write an offer where the buyer gets all the appliances, mm, they're not going to like yours the best. So you need to contact that listing agent and reach out to them and be like, what is the seller looking for? Yeah, that's going to help you craft the offer because like Christina said, it's not just price. These are human. These are people. It might be price. That might be the most important thing to them. 
but it may not be. Mm -hmm. So go deep on that. And that actually rolls right into the number one thing. The number one thing you can do. And again, we're talking about in a market, uh, a seller's market, networking. Networking. Now, what are we talking about? I mean, there's, you know, uh, networking. We, we want to get real specific with this. So let's think about a dance. Have you ever been to a dance? So mo some people dread it. Some people love it. But let's just say you are at a dance and you wanted to dance, right? <laughs> I'm ready to dance. So who do I dance with, right? So you can look and you can see someone that's maybe on the edge of the dance floor. They're sitting there and they're, they're looking around, they right? They might be wiggling in their chair, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> He or she might be a good prospect to dance with, right? Now, we're going to get a little even better. What if there's somebody that's on the dance floor already dancing by themselves? Mmm, now you, you're hot. You can go right over there and start dancing. Well, it's the same in real estate. Let's just say you put in that offer and you didn't get it, right? That agent is already <clears throat> working with a seller. And maybe you may love working with buyers. They may love working with sellers. So they may have another listing coming up that you don't even know about. They may have talked to the neighbors. They may have something around the corner. They may have another listing that you don't know about, okay? Now, does this work? Absolutely. We ran into the same thing. Uh, we were working with some clients. They were well qualified. We put in an offer. The offer was the bomb.com. We, we asked what, what the seller wanted. We, we did all of that. We, we didn't get it. So what do we do? We continue to network with that agent. We spoke to the agent. We said, hey, listen, um, we know we didn't get this property, you know, we, but we're not here to, to, you know, really talk about that. Do you have any other listings coming up? Now, she was so focused on that particular property because she was kind of overwhelmed with so many offers on it. She didn't even mention to us that she had another one, but she did. And it wasn't, it wasn't even finished yet. Right. Okay, they were adding a new kitchen. They were doing remodeling the house. It wasn't done. We were able to see it before it was done. We wrote up an offer. We, we stayed in contact with her. And the moment it got listed that day, we had the offer in. And she already was familiar with our clients because we had already given another offer. We had already told her about them. Boom. We got it. And, it, and and her seller was super happy because it sold so quickly and it was it was a really strong offer because we knew everything they wanted. So this definitely works. And we get calls. We work with a lot of uh we do a lot of listings as well. But we work with buyers too. But we have we do a lot of listings. And agents call us. You know, we have a network of, of agents. They call, they say, hey. You know, do you have anything coming up in this area? Mm -hmm. And if we do, we say, yeah, we'll have something coming up in a week. Give me a call back. Don't expect that listing agent to call you back. Right. Because likely they're not. You have to do the work. Put on the overalls. You have to call them and stay in touch with them. Right? It's like planting that seed and watering it, cultivating it. You have to cultivate that relationship, and when it's ready, you know, be be there. Okay, that's that 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 is actually the easiest way because you know some of the other ways are a little scary, a little bit out of the box. We started with them because they work, you know, but then we wanted to get to the easiest one, and this is the easiest one: calling our peers. We're already calling. You're already doing it. 
So add a little bit more flavor and you're going to have a, a tasty dish. So those are the five points, what you can do when there's low inventory or if your buyer is looking for a house that's real specific in a specific area, what you can do to get a house for them. If you want more training, like Christina mentioned, please go to prettyhomeacademy.com and feel free to uh, look for our next workshops that we have coming up. We have some workshops coming on there if you want to improve your business, your real estate business. And we also have uh, strategy calls where we can actually do a one-on-one -on -one call with you and tighten up your business, see what's authentic to you, what you want to focus on, and show you how to win in this game because the rules are changing. You got to be with it. Thanks for watching. All right. See you on the next one.